Hey everyone, Tesla Tom here. Just wanted to run through software update 2022.24.6 today in our Tesla Model 3 performance dual motor here in Sydney, Australia. This is a 2019 Tesla Model 3. Let's go check out the release notes. All right, so we've got four new features here for 2022.24.6. So let's check out the first one, Tesla profiles. Keep your settings and preferences synchronized across all supported vehicles using the Tesla account, including mirror, seating and steering wheel adjustments, autopilot, driving and climate control preferences, navigation, media and data sharing preferences. You can set up your Tesla profile from driver profile settings and change your profile picture from the Tesla mobile app. So this is a very handy feature. For example, if you uh, rent Tesla cars from a car sharing platform, for example, or a hire car, uh, provider then you can carry your Tesla profile across different vehicles which is very handy or if you're lending your car to someone for, uh, for whatever reason then that person can load their profile into your car and vice versa so let's check that out right now let's go to Tesla profile driver profile settings as you can see here we've got several profiles already in this car working TT which is myself joy my wife and then TTLF which is actually linked to uh, my mobile app and my Tesla account and so I could potentially transfer uh, this TTLF account into other vehicles and keep all my profile settings, which is really super handy. It says here, Tesla profile. To set up the Tesla profile for a new driver, share this vehicle with them from your Tesla mobile app, security ad driver. Their Tesla profile will automatically appear in this vehicle after gaining app access with their Tesla account. Vehicle settings such as seat, mirror, steering wheel and air vent positions are saved by vehicle type. If the seat or steering positions do not restore as expected to tap service seat and seating calibration, your Tesla profile will be removed from any vehicle not associated with your Tesla account. Tesla profiles are supported on Model 3 and Model Y, as well as 2021 Plus Model 3 and Model X long range and plaid vehicles with software versions 2022.24 or higher. And make sure you've got the latest Tesla uh, mobile app version as well on your device. Now make sure you stay tuned to my channel because I will be doing a more detailed video on this feature uh, very shortly in a future video. So stay tuned. All right, so in seat calibration, this procedure will calibrate the steering column and driver's seat by moving it up all the way back and down. Make sure there is nothing behind or underneath the driver's seat. To stop calibration seat movement, press any seat control. If the calibration was cancelled or failed due to obstruction, please retry at your earliest convenience to restore functionality. So you can see the steering wheel moving up and down and my seat is now moving back and forward and down. There we go, I'm reclining now all the way. And that's what it's doing, it's just calibrating the seat and steering wheel. Pretty quick procedure. And I'm going forward now all the way into the steering wheel. Okay, let's go back to the rest of the features. So scrolling down, blind spot monitor. Adjust the placement of your blind spot camera on your display by dragging your camera feed. This camera feed will appear in the same position when your blinker is active to enable. Tap controls, autopilot, automatic blind spot monitor. So let's put the right indicator on to see where it is now by default. So now it is in this uh, top corner here. It's interesting the auto high beam icon is now below it. You can of course drag it back to its original position pre-update or you can put it up here in the uh, nav screen there uh, of course we'll test this out on our test drive and uh, see where the best position is for this blind spot camera okay traffic along route any slow traffic conditions along your navigation route are now shown prominently as part of the route line on the map note this feature requires premium connectivity and driver profiles, any navigation recents or favorites will now be saved to the active driver profile. Now this one I didn't run through in my last update, but Tesla Vision update for 2022.20. Your vehicle is now running Tesla Vision. It will rely on camera vision coupled with neural net processing to deliver certain autopilot and active safety features. Vehicles using Tesla Vision have received top safety set ratings and fleet data shows that it is it provides overall enhanced safety for our customers. Note that with Tesla Vision available, following distance settings are now from two to seven and auto steer top speed is 140 kilometers an hour. Obviously 140 is quick enough for me. I never go past 110 generally. And uh, distance settings two to seven. Uh, sometimes I do go to one, so that will affect me slightly. That will of course go for a test drive a bit later on in this video and uh, check out just very briefly Tesla Vision update. All right, let's hit the open road. We'll see you very shortly. 
Okay everyone, welcome back. Just on the uh, road now, just doing a bit of testing for you guys today. And uh, the first thing I want to do is show you, just when you indicate on the road like that, that's where it goes. By default when you have the update. And of course, when you are driving, you can always switch it to down here, back to where it was pre-update. If you want, you can also switch it to over there to cover some of the nav. One thing about having, uh, I guess, that covering the nav is that then you get the directions here at the top. That's not a bad thing either, uh, but then you don't get uh, your direction and your state of charge when you, re uh, when you arrive at your destination or the other metrics like what time, how long it takes, how far away it is. So I think this is quite a nice compromise in this top corner here. You do miss out on uh, a little bit in this top section, but what is nice is that if, uh, if you put it there, then all that stuff uh, falls down below. So that's probably the best compromise, I think, moving forward. Let's uh, see what happens when we engage autopilot like that. Okay, so we've got uh, the full self-driving package, uh, which has got the auto lane change, so we'll test that as well. If you've got enhanced autopilot, then you also get the auto lane change, and we'll see what it looks like with the uh, blind spot monitor now on, uh, on the full self-driving and enhanced autopilot lane change function. Okay, so here we go. Just accelerate a little bit just past the intersection so we can speed up a bit faster. It's still a little bit slow out of the blocks with, um, with that go on green, but I tend to just tap the accelerator a bit more so it's a bit quicker off the mark. Okay, let's see what happens when we change lanes on auto lane change like that. So that's what it looks like. It does cover some of the top of the uh, visualizations there, but not a huge deal. And uh, just a quick uh, trick for you guys, quick tip, when the speed changes, so it's going to go to 80 now, just right stalk, tap all the way down, and that will uh, match the max autopilot speed limit as well to 80 kilometers an hour. Okay, so that's what it looks like with uh, autopilot and lane change. Alright, so I've just disengaged autopilot. What we'll do is switch back in this left lane so that's what it looks like there without the autopilot function you can see there uh, again that's quite a nice compromise having that in the top corner there All right, let's put autopilot back on i also want to do a quick test of the the camera only or the vision only system now that our uh, tesla model 3 2019 performance uh, is now enabled with with that previous update as you saw earlier from dot 20 so apparently it doesn't use, um, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't use the sensors anymore. It's all camera based. So that'll be interesting. And of course you can only select, let's see, lane keeping to two now. See that? I can't go to one as the software update note said. You can go up to seven. That's a new one. Two to seven. And now it's 60 kilometers an hour. So we'll flick it down to 60. So let's go back to two. I can't go past 140. I'm not keen to test that, of course, today. And that, um, you see the traffic flow now, the different colors. I mean, I thought it was always there, but now it seems a bit bolder, possibly, that the color seems to pop out a bit more from the screen. Uh, anecdotally, I might have to go back to my previous videos to see what it looked like before. But it seems a bit more bold, the red, the orange, just to differentiate it as you're driving along your route there. Possibly because in the past uh, it was only sort of general guides on the uh, traffic flow, but now your direction, your route that you've taken with the nav now shows you what the traffic flow is like, flow is like uh, on your drive, on your route. Now keep right to stay on Babbage Road. Okay, so let's see how it fares on this intersection. In 200 meters, okay, so right red light comes to a complete stop, hopefully. Yep, sure does. Autopilot unable to proceed, please take over, so we'll disengage. Uh, when I said sensors before, I meant uh, radar. Uh, looks like it's camera-based only autopilot now. Okay, let's cut into the left lane. Like so. Again, that's what it looks like in the top corner. Let's 
Let's see how it fares. Autopilot in stop start traffic. Pothole. Now I've got to say, this has made a huge difference, a huge quality of life improvement having this here now. I'm actually using it uh, because tucked in this bottom corner here was almost unusable. The steering wheel was blocking maybe 25% of the, uh, the, the, the vision, the screen. So I think having this here in this top corner is great. And of course, uh, having this in even better up here, then you can see. Um, let's just can cancel the nav, I will go my own way. Let me show what I mean. So having this in this top corner, if you're not using uh, if you're not using the nav, then I think this is quite a good location to have. So I guess it really depends where whether you use nav often enough. If you don't, then this might be good for you. If you use nav quite often, then this might be better for you, this quadrant here. So your choice, you've seen my video now, so I'll let you decide and maybe leave a comment below as to what you think is the best position for uh, the blind spot monitor on Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. All right, everyone, that's it for me today. Tesla Tom, thanks for watching Ludicrous Feed. Thanks for watching Software Update uh, 2022.24.6. And I shall see you at the next Software Update video. And as always, Happy charging.